Hey YouTube, uh, today we're going to do a quick little unboxing and um, attempt to do an SSD installation on this uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 15. Um, this is an Ultrabook that I picked up, I don't know, a couple months ago. It's uh, considered a budget Ultrabook. Um, it was came in just under a thousand bucks, so I don't really know how budget that is, but um it's got pretty good specs. It's got the i7 uh, 4500U, the uh, low voltage um, Ultrabook processor, um, 8 gigs of RAM. It comes with a uh, 500 gigabyte um, SSHD, so that has like a uh, 8 gigabyte solid state drive um, cache in it. Um, basically, caches your um, frequently used files and uh, caches the uh, OS for quick boots. But, um, this thing also has a bay in it for uh, M2 solid state drive, which that's what's in this box that we're about to open and uh, take a look at. So um, I ordered this from a, a company, I think it's called My Digital something. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. It was about $100 shipped, and uh, it's 128 gigabyte, just a little, uh, they call it an M2 or a next generation form factor. It's a really tiny little solid state drive. Go ahead and take that out. Look at him. So this one has a, um, they make them with a lot of different types of uh, connectors. Uh, this is a MSATA connection. Um, there's a couple different MSATA key patterns that they have. Um, there's uh, PCI Express um, ones. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure what the connection is on the bay inside of here. I couldn't find a lot of info on it. Um, I talked to a guy, a customer service guy at the company that I bought this from, and he said he was like 90% sure that this would work inside of my Ultrabook. Um, if not, he said I could send it back for a full refund. So um, I'm going to go ahead and crack this thing open. I've already got the screws out. Um, I've had this thing apart before. The back was a pain in the butt to get off the first time. So I'm hoping it's not quite as bad this time. I've got all the screws out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the back off. Okay, got the back pulled off of here. Um, if you guys are going to be doing this with this particular Ultrabook, um, we got these two little rubber feet on the back of the uh, on the bottom of the ultra book up here towards the hinges make sure you pop those off they've got some adhesive on the back and they, just, they just pop right off and there's screws underneath those as well um, the first time I took this back off it was a real pain to get off um, but it was actually pretty easy since then this is like the second time second or third time I've taken it off so after the first time it's not bad but the first time it, it's real tough um, you have to take a spudger or a um, butter knife or something and, and kind of break it off around the edges not literally break anything but just kind of uh, get it free um, I've always heard that Lenovo's are a pain to get the back off of and um, I have to agree so anything anyway here's the uh, here's the bay for the uh, the M2 or the uh, next generation form factor whatever you want to call it um, this is the connector here and that's the uh, screw hole. Um, it takes a 42 millimeter. So this little guy is just going to clip right inside of there and then screw down right there. So I'm hoping that that is a MSATA connector. It looks like a PCI connector. But um, even though it looks like a PCI, it doesn't mean that it is. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try to install this bad boy in there and hope that the uh, computer sees it. Okay, so I got the drive stuck in the uh, bay now. Just went ahead and stuck it in the little connector there. Um, it'll only fit in there one way. Um, I actually had it in, was trying to put it in upside down. Um, I thought that the uh, label would go on top. It's kind of uh, a little tricky with this because this connector has uh, like one key inside of it, like one little notch in it, and it's off to the far left side of the connector. And this uh, card has has a notch on both sides. Um, 
on the end of one notch there'll be four connectors and the other one has five connectors um, it needs to be turned so that the uh, four connector one is far off to the left at any rate um, it'll only go in there one way and that's the right way so got it put in there um, just got to put the screw in to hold it down so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay there it is fit in there perfectly <clears throat> which is good <laughs> Um, <clears throat> unfortunately the screw that came with it, um, the threads weren't the right size on it. They were a little too small. It just kind of went right in there and, uh, just kind of sat in there. Um, so it wasn't doing a good job of holding the card in. <clears throat> it looks like the, uh, the receptacle for the screw is the same size of the uh, screws that hold the, uh, back of the laptop on. Uh, luckily I had a couple extras of those laying around so I just went ahead and grabbed one of those and it's uh, got it in there good and snug now. So uh, got the SSD installed. It was really easy installation. Just snaps right in, screw it down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the uh, back cover on here and uh, start the laptop up and see if Windows recognizes the SSD. Okay, so we got everything put back together, booted up. Go ahead and get in here and see what we can see. So um, I'm just kind of doing this. It's the first time I've ever uh, upgraded a uh, up to an SSD or added an SSD. So uh, this is I'm just kind of learning as I go here, folks. So. Um, I don't see Windows detecting anything just yet. Um, let's see if there's another drive in here. And no, there is not. So I might have to boot into the BIOS and see what I see there because I'm not seeing Windows isn't uh, pulling anything up here yet. I was kind of hoping that it would just kind of, you know, be like a thumb drive or something and, uh, just kind of see that there was another storage device connected but unfortunately it's not and I kind of had a feeling it wouldn't okay so I uh, went ahead and shut down the computer and booted into the BIOS um, to do that on this uh, particular model there's a small little kind of recess button right next to the uh, power button so you just power down the laptop and then uh, power it back on pushing that button and it'll come straight into your BIOS here um, good news is that the uh, BIOS is seeing the SSD <clears throat> so the that tells me that it's the right connector and um, the disk is probably gonna work um, before when I uh, booted into this BIOS I just had one hard disk which was the, uh, the bottom which is now hard disk 2 um, that it's the uh, 500 gigabyte SSHD that I have. Well, now I'm showing uh, the uh, SCT or uh, excuse me SC2 M2 SSD. It's kind of a mouthful of uh, letters and numbers there. So I'm seeing it in the BIOS. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, kind of dig around and figure out how I am going to put Windows onto that particular SSD. Um, like I said, I'm just kind of learning as I go here, so um, I'm hoping that somebody watching this video will be able to uh, get some instructions on how to do this theirself. Okay, so what I've done is um, went into the recovery options. You can just hit Windows Search or open your little charms bar and go to that. Um, enter recovery. Sorry about this uh, camera. I'm actually filming this with my cell phone um, go to this recovery option and um, the first option that you see on top create a recovery drive um, I'm using this 32 gigabyte uh, USB 3.0 um, I think the file it has to be at least a 16 gigabyte drive according to this so it took about 20 minutes or so to create the drive and I uh, just did that Real simple. So now I have a USB uh, image. Um, I'm hoping that I can get a clean 
like OEM install off of that USB. Um, without saving all my programs and apps and all that, I just want to just start clean. Um, so basically what I'm going to do now is take the back off of the computer again and uh, remove the uh, my Seagate um, um, hybrid drive that uh, currently contains the uh, Windows 8 operating system. Take that out. Um, I've already got the uh, SSD installed. I'm going to leave that in. Um, try to boot from this USB and just try to uh, do a clean install onto the SSD. Okay, well, um, I was kind of having a major headache of a time trying to basically create a fresh image of my just OEM <clears throat> Windows 8. Um, this computer's OEM is Windows 8, not Windows 8.1. So I was, you know, expecting to just try to get a image file of the uh, stock OEM Windows 8, um, get that set up, and then get all my updates installed, and then update to Windows 8.1, just like I did when I bought the computer. Um, to be honest, you know, I, I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, if I kept digging and, and you know, trying to find a way, I probably could have eventually. But luckily, um, I was able to get my hands on this Windows 8 ISO. Here, it's a, a genuine Windows 8 ISO. Um, I've got a key that I purchased for it. So basically purchased a <clears throat> new, just retail version of Windows 8. Um, it's not Windows 8.1, it's Windows 8. Um, so it's not going to be the uh, OEM version of Windows 8 that came with this Lenovo Ultrabook. So I'm going to have to go through and install all my drivers and any of the OEM software that I like to use, which wasn't much, maybe one or two programs. Um, so uh, basically what I'm doing right now is creating a uh, bootable... USB drive. Um, this is called the uh, Windows 7 uh, USB DVD tool. Even though it's called Windows 7, it still works for Windows 8. Um, sorry, I keep saying um. I have a bad habit of uh, doing that. Please try to ignore that. But anyway, so I'm making this uh, USB thing and then I'm going to go ahead and boot from that and try to install a fresh clean retail version of Windows 8 on the SSD. Okay so I got the uh, <clears throat> computer to boot from the uh, USB the uh, Windows 8 installation USB I just made. <clears throat> I had to go into the BIOS and change some things. I had to turn secure boot off and turn the uh, UEFI off and change it over to legacy mode. I don't know why it needed that, but that's what I ended up having to do to make it boot from the USB, from this particular USB. So anyway, here we are. We're booted from it. So we're English, United States, English, US, next. Repair your computer, install now. So let's just hope that we see the SSD. This is our moment of truth. Setup is starting. Okay, we've got the accept license terms, blah, blah, blah. Let me go ahead and accept that. Next. Okay, upgrade, install Windows, and keep file settings and applications. Custom install Windows only. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got all these partitions. You know what? Something happened with my... <laughs> so it's seeing the SSD. It's there. Something happened with my SSD when I was trying to uh, move the OEM over and it put a whole bunch of partitions on the SSD. I'm not sure why or how that happened. I didn't tell it to. So luckily when you go to install Windows, you get this little uh, disk utility that comes up. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe out all these partitions, format everything, get it down to just one partition, and then go from there. So I just uh, went ahead and went through the little uh, utility and um, deleted each partition individually. Um, it gives you an option to format the uh, remaining partition, which I didn't do. Um, I figure Windows will format it the way it wants during the installation. 
So I got it down to where it was just one partition of unallocated space, which came out to 119.2 gigabytes. Um, and uh, it looks like it's installing now. So let's hope everything works out good. Okay, it uh, looks like it installed successfully. Um, it restarted a couple times. It did it extremely quick. That was definitely the fastest uh, I've ever gotten through that process ever. Um, so I'm here at the uh, beginning of just personalizing and getting it going. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I uh, went ahead, um, got uh, Windows 8 installed from the uh, ISO. Got it, um, just went ahead and installed uh, Windows 8, updated all of the uh, Windows updates, and then I was able to update to uh, Windows 8.1 through the uh, Windows App Store. <clears throat> so I just did the uh, Windows 8.1 update, and it's uh, doing a reboot right now. So we should be starting up and looking good. So kind of had to do some things, figure some things out. Uh, couldn't get the OEM OS onto my SSD. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. <clears throat> um, I could have, I guess, migrated the whole hard drive over to the SSD, and that would have kept all the program settings and everything intact, but I've heard bad things about that method. Um, I wanted to just get a clean OEM reinstall, but uh, that didn't happen. So anyway, now I've just got a clean retail version of uh, Windows 8.1. Everything seems to be booting up good here. So we're going to let this boot up and uh, see what happens.